Dash and Lily's Book of Dare is split into alternating chapters between those told by Dash and those told by Lily, and they're written um, likewise by David Levithan, who does Dash, and Rachel Cohen, who does Lily. So I'm going to share a little bit of Dash's chapter, and then I'll switch so you can get a taste of what Lily's voice sounds like, too. 1. Dash. December 21st. Imagine this. You're in your favorite bookstore scanning the shelves. You get to a section where a favorite author's books reside, and there, nestled comfortably between the incredibly familiar spines, sits a red notebook. What do you do? The choice, I think, is obvious. You take down the red notebook and open it, and then you do whatever it tells you to do. It was Christmas time in New York City, the most detestable time of the year. The moonlight crowds, the endless visits from hapless relatives, the airsats cheer, the joyless attempts at joyfulness. My natural aversion to human contact could only intensify in this context. Wherever I went, I was on the wrong end of the stampede. I was not willing to grant salvation through any army. I would never care about the whiteness of Christmas. I was a Decemberist, a Bolshevik, a career criminal, a philatelist, trapped by unknowable anguish. Whatever anyone else was not, I was willing to be. I walked as invisibly as I could through the Pavlovian spent-drunk hordes, the broken winter breakers, the foreigners who had flown halfway across the world to see the lighting of a tree, without realizing how completely pagan such a ritual was. The only bright side of this dim season was that school was shuttered, presumably so everyone could shop ad nauseum and discover that family, like arsenic, works best in small doses, unless you prefer to die. This year, I had managed to become a voluntary orphan for Christmas, telling my mother that I was spending it with my father, and my father that I was spending it with my mother, so that each of them booked non-refundable vacations with their post-divorce paramours. My parents hadn't spoken to each other in eight years, which gave me a lot of leeway in the determination of factual accuracy, and therefore a lot of time to myself. I was popping back and forth between their apartments while they were away, but mostly I was spending time in the Strand, that bastion of titillating erudition, not so much a bookstore as the collision of a hundred different bookstores, with literary wreckage strewn over eighteen miles of shelves. All the clerks there saunter slouch around distractedly in their skinny jeans and their thrift store button-downs, like older siblings who will never, ever be bothered to talk to you, or care about you, or even acknowledge your existence if their friends are around, which they always are. Some bookstores want you to believe they're a community center, like they need to host a cookie-making class in order to sell you some, pro some Proust. But the strand leaves you completely on your own, caught between the warring forces of organization and idiosyncrasy, with idiosyncrasy winning every time. In other words, it was my kind of graveyard.